Hello everybody. In this lecture, I will show you how you can use decision tree to train and predict wine class uh, with an example. So wine have uh, two classes, a red wine and a white wine, and based on certain chemical composition, the system will try to predict if it is a wet, uh, if it's a red or a white. Let me show you the data. It's a wine dot table data in my database, in my data table, and that's how the data looks like. So there is volatile acidity, citric acid, residual sugar, so colorides, pH quality color and and color is the one that actually I am targeting right now so everything else is I will be using to predict and some are nominal like here and some are continuous attributes and at the end I have either a white or a red wine that I will actually use as a class label by default that's actually this is not specified here but I will show you how. So first I will partition the data by A to 20. And it's a relative, sorry, this is more like 75. Should be, let's do it 80. And then I will actually stratify sample based on color. That's meaning that I will consider how many red and white I have in the sample. Based on that, I will actually try to be fair in sampling. I could be doing random sampling without taking into account how much of my sam uh, test space or the data that I have as red or re white. I might just uh, grab randomly or I can maybe pick linearly like every three I will just pick one or maybe just pick the top whatever the top is uh, from the top. Again I will be choosing 20 versus 80. I can be using others, but basically I'm looking at color for this moment. I'm trying to classify based on the color. Okay. So there's two tables. One is uh, first partition with training data. And the second partition, that's the remaining for uh, testing. So here, I will actually send this part of the data into decision tree learner. And I'm using class column as color. I might be using gain index or gain index, uh, gain index or gain ratio. And you remember this from the lecture. I may be pruning or I may choose not to prune, which I will talk later on. Pruning is basically reducing the number of leaves. So we have a limited uh, decision tree. Minimum number of records per node. I can limit that. So I should have at least eight. Or I can actually take bring that down. number of records uh, to store for weave this is not uh, that critical but it is for weaving the decision tree how many records do we need to have it to see it it's not that critical so probably you don't need to worry about this much average split point uh, number of threads that's about execution skip nominal columns without domain information uh, if there are such columns it will not be considered we have root split we can force it to otherwise we will leave it as as is and binary nominal splits maximum number of nominal splits is nine so if it is above nine we will actually force it to binary split otherwise we can have nominal splits up to 9 PML settings 
no true child strategy return null prediction missing value none or I can actually use the last value predicted for the missing value so basically most of them are probably default but you can actually look at this decision tree learner and find out about it more about what it means each option means and this is from C 4.5 machine learning algorithm which we already talk about what it what it is how it is different and let me make sure that I actually choose guinea index let's do guinea index first but it won't change much I can actually also use gain ratio which penalizes multiple splits many many splits right and here I will have a model once I execute it you can actually look at it this is the model based on training data so it is actually telling you the decision criteria uh, total sulfur lesser equal to value 66.5 so it is actually picking up this as a split point but it could be doing others as others as well and then now I will actually fit this model and I will also fit the data for testing uh, don't have to worry about highlighting option it's about view I don't need to change prediction column name it's a prediction color I can actually rename it if, you, if I would like basically you need to just uh, run with the test data because I already have the model executed and actually created now I will actually evaluate how well I did with score I have color versus predicted color and it will actually compare these two and then find out how many true positives or false uh, negatives true negatives and false positives do I have and based on that it will actually construct a confusion matrix that you can actually look at it and I will tell you what it means uh, in the confusion matrix so here I have white as data that I know in the test case right then I am predicting white how many times 974 times but out of out of so many whites I have six of them that I actually misclassified as red so I would like to actually have these diagonal ones higher so if I am red and I would like to predict them as red so that is true positive or true negative if you if you want to say this is positive and that's negative I would like to have as many as matching here and 18 is false negative so I am actually missing these values so I have errors here basically but my true positives are really high so how many times it was white and I predicted white and how many times it was white but then I predicted red versus how many times it was red and I predicted red and how many times it was red but then I predicted white so that's how you can read this confusion matrix and accuracy statistics it will tell you like how many times you actually correctly classify true positives and both case how many times I actually have false positives 18 and 6 how many times do I have true negatives because this is actually this is going to be symmetric right now so this is actually probably enough for me and here I have these recall precision sensitivity specificity and accuracy 
So what these are means you can actually look at it, but basically it is trying to assess the validity of the model. So basically taking taking all samples and then count adding up errors and dividing by the total sample size. And it's trying to get a number which is around 90 some percent. So these are really high numbers. But for each of these, you can actually look at the form, uh, formula. Here we have, this is confusion matrix. But here I should have false positives. Okay, here I should have information on sensitivity as well as others. But let me see uh, accuracy, for instance, true positive plus true negative divided by divided by true positive true negative true false positive false, false negative so everything else basically so it's counting three positives plus three negatives and dividing by everything so for all of these once you have the confusion matrix you can actually deduct these and then calculate accuracy as well as recall precision sensitivity specificity so these are how it is formulated true positive divided by true positive plus false negative so this is about uh, true positive rate recall or sensitivity so basically uh, we would like to have high numbers for those so if it is almost close to 100 percent then that's actually good so this is how it works. So I have run this already. I created a model and then I ran the test. Now I would like to view it. So this is just about viewing standard settings. I can choose and I can look at my decision tree through this chart. So first it is actually as you click on it it will give you information this is my root and i am actually first using to total sulfur dioxide and if it is less than 66.5 then i classify create another table and look at chlorides and again for chloride I'm checking against 0 0.05 and it is going down each time I click on this I can actually see how the tree is composed so this is basically a decision tree and has bunch of values for these asset values as and actually you are going from top to bottom to decide which one works for the data that you have in the test case and this is our decision tree that we can actually take and code it and have this model running and if you look at it if you look at the data these are my values and in the last column this is white it is labeled and I predicted white but not looking at color I'm looking at everything else and then using that decision tree I decided it to be white and this is true for the most time most of the time if you look at it I'm doing really well in prediction so I'm trying to be as close as to this one and I'm actually really close 99% of the time but there's gonna be once in a while one record every maybe 100 or 1000 and I will have some misclassification so you can actually see how well it is the model is doing so again I'm only using these values only so this is decision tree example and it's a basic classification uh, of decision tree 
there are other approaches as well but uh, for now this is uh, sufficient